Thanks, Ricky Dillard, for joining us on the Black Gospel Blog. First, congratulations on your new album. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very kindly. And and 25 years in the gospel music industry, does it feel like 25 years have gone by? Uh, it does not. It has been an awesome journey. Uh, and to actually say that we are 26 years uh, this year, because uh, when we cut the album Amazing, it was 25 years. Now its release is 26 years. So it does not feel uh, the time where I wonder where the time has went, uh, where it's gone, because uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed this run um, from the beginning in 1988 till now. Wow, well, you know, before we talk about the new album, the Black Gospel blog is located in Chicago, and I wanted to ask you about this experience you had recently with Gunfire. T talk a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Well, actually, um, my car, one of my cars was uh, parked on 80. Uh, third in the Halsey Street area mm -hmm. and in broad daylight there was a shootout that took place in the area and one of the bullets of the shootout hit my uh, car and I was not in the car but just to imagine if I was pulling up or getting out or driving past or anything of that nature one of those bullets that hit my car it could have actually hit me mm -hmm. but I thank God for his awesome power and grace that has protected and been a shield against a lot of things that uh, could destroy us and could bring us down but uh, it's unfortunate of the gun violence in our city and uh, I am working on some marches some stop the violence marches that will be taking place and you'll be hearing about them real soon whereas we're going to try to encourage our community and especially our young men our young African American men uh, black men to put down their guns and let's uh, do some other things that might be constructive and will be constructive for our, our community. Sure. I, 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 I think it's great what you're doing. Uh, it's really, yeah, number one, it's great that you weren't in that car at the time, and, and secondly, uh, that, uh, that you're helping to uh, mobilize uh, some more support for you know, this anti-violence because it's just terrible in Chicago. It's just really It's awful. very terrible. It's very terrible. And we don't know whose family it could be next. It could be your family. It could be my family. It could be anybody's family, son, daughter, mother, father. But we've got to stop the hate and bring more love to our community and more love and support. Absolutely. Well, speaking of Chicago, you where did you go to high school in Chicago? I actually am from a suburb, Chicago Heights, oh, okay. uh, which I was born and raised and went to Bloom High School uh, in the early 80s. Uh, I was there and graduated in 1983. And you started a choir there. I did. I started the first gospel choir in 1980 at Bloom High School, and I do believe that the choir is still existing today. Now, did anybody from that choir join you in, in New G? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I had quite a few singers that sang on the the high school choir that joined me in the beginning of uh, my organization of New Chi. Okay. Well, how did you become associated with Dr. Maddie Moss Clark? Um, actually, um, I uh, was raised in a community called Mason Court. And it was a project, and uh, uh, it was low-income housing. So there was a Church of God in Christ. It was called New First Church of God in Christ. Uh, we would visit there and go there for services, and I ended up finding out the likes of persons like Dr. Matty Moss Clark, who influenced the music on that national church called the Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. And I was able to buy her records, and in 1980, when I started the high school choir at uh, Wilm High School, I was able to go sit under the tutelage of the late Dr. Matty Moss Clark in a gospel class that she taught at the National Convention of the Church, and I was able to sit and meet her, and in later years, when I started my choir and put out my first record, she welcomed me into her uh, company, uh, whereas I could, uh, you know, really continue to grow and be empowered by her leadership. Wow. Well, I first heard of you through More Abundantly, which I consider to be one of the 100 most influential gospel songs of all time. Oh, thank you, kind sir. Well, you're welcome. And how did that song become part of New G's repertory? Well, actually, um, I got that arrangement from my one of my first songwriters. His name is Darius Brooks. He was a songwriter and musical director for the, the same Thompson Community Singers. 
he at that time was very popular in producing and writing songs and ended up uh, coming to help me on my very first project and that was one of the songs that I wanted and uh, he gave that song to me and we went out here on the road singing more abundantly and it was one of our first signature songs and really one of our signature songs today. And listening to uh, the new album Amazing, I still hear the signature sound that you have, you, you back in 1990, you listen into more yeah. lovely, it's still there. How, how do you describe the, the Ricky Dillard choral sound? Um, it is very big. It's a very big sound with a lot of vibrato tones and, um, I call it a musical flair. Uh, because there are not many choirs that sound like my choir, but many have mimicked the sound, and they do have the sound. And I'm so grateful to say that our sound is very much an original sound that many have wanted to mimic. It, it's, it's just collabor collaborated with such a consistency of its tone and its highs and lows and its uh, crescendos. All of these things kind of kind of make up the full sound that you hear today that's called the Ricky Dillard sound. And, and who, who do you count as among your musical influences that may perhaps helped you to inspire you to create that sound? I would say the likes of my late uh, musical father, Dr. Charles G. Hayes, and the Cosmopolitan Church of Prayer Choir, uh, which was my all-time favorite. And I've also had uh, the late Reverend Milton Brunson and the Thompson Community Singers, in whom I was able for about maybe eight to nine years of my early years before starting New G, sit under the tutelage and be on the choir uh, called the Thompson Community Singers. And of course, Dr. Maddie Moss Clark was an influence because she taught me in that class in 1980 how to train choirs. As I watched her train the National Convention Choir, I was able to grab and to uh, be empowered on how to uh, really train a choir. Yeah. So I, I give it to those people. And there are more, like Thomas Whitfield, uh, Benny Cummings, uh, James Cleveland. These people were all fabulous in what they did as choir leaders and choir masters. So I really kind of tilt my hat to their legacies. Uh, that's the reason why I'm standing, and I'm standing on their shoulders. Sort of a Detroit-Chicago connection right there. It's very much so, very much so, because Detroit was amazing with its gospel sound as well. So I do give credit to choirs like the Voices of Tabernacle, uh, to Thomas Whitfield Company, to St. James Baptist Church. I mean, it was some great, great choirs in Detroit. And it's good to hear because that shows the lineage of, of the those choirs that it still continues to influence music today. Yes, yes. And people like myself, we're oftentimes trying to keep those legacies of our old leaders in place as history because, you know, these are the persons that allowed us to have a platform today. Well, and I totally agree. In fact, Dr. Charles G. Hayes and Cosmopolitan is how I got introduced to gospel music back uh, in 1984, so yeah. It, uh, wow, 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 that's great. So when you started out, did you ever anticipate that your music would take you this far? I really didn't. I did this because I just love it. I was not, I didn't come out looking for a record deal, but I don't think any artist would not want an opportunity to record a record. However, um, when I started New G, it was just my passion. I wanted to empower other singers and musicians, and I wanted them to be able to go back to their local assemblies and also train, as I have trained them, train their choirs to be the best in the area. So um, I never knew that the Lord would take us this far, but I'm so honored and forever grateful to His grace and that He has spoken a word and it has come into fruition. Well, and now listening to Amazing, uh, you've enlisted quite a few uh, top artists for the project. Uh, one of them that stood out, uh, and she always stands out, is Leandria Johnson. Oh, my God, Leandria Johnson is simply amazing. When I laid eyes on Leandria for the first time, she walked out on the stage in the audition of Sunday's Best. She had on house shoes, and she was homeless. But she sang with such a conviction of faith. 
that made me believe that where she, the place she was sinking from was experience and that God, that she had the faith in God that he would bring her out and look at Leandra today. She's singing on many projects. She has her own projects. The world loves her. Thank God for his grace over her life. And I think that, the, and that to me is one of the highlights of the album, and it's her voice matched to the right song, and it's a very, very good gospel song, and it just all has like the right components, sort of like that's the kind of song she yes, has to do. I agree, I agree, and, I agree. And then you have Pastor DeAndre Patterson, our, our, our gentleman here from Chicago. Yes, one of my good old buddies. Uh, of course, we featured Pastor Patterson on a few of our previous recordings, and with the reunion, there was no way that I could do a reunion and not cut him. <laughs> so we ended up doing a collaboration, he and I, on a J.J. Harrison composition called I Believe. Yes, yes, and Byron Cage? Byron Cage, the Prince of Praise, who is one of my best friends, uh, who is in transition of a new deal and a new record as well. And I told him, I said, I want you to come sing on my record. So there'll be something out here until you, you know, come forward with your new piece. They'll still be hearing from you. So Byron Cage did an awesome, awesome job with executing the uh, one of the cuts, or one of the ballad cuts on this album called Grateful. Excellent. Well, and talk about the single Amazing, because I understand it is it's your testimony. It is actually my testimony. Um, I have been in a study of the new covenant that God gave to man, which is called grace, the unmerited, the unearned favor of God. Um, I believe that church has such a high standard of living that even God himself knew that man really could not project and hold together with. They would not be able to really fulfill. And as many of them that think they can fulfill it, then they, if it were so, they would have done it by now. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So this record is centered around the grace of Christ, the grace of Christ. Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every man that believes. And he describes this gospel as good news. And then we ask, what is the good news? The good news was that this Jesus came in the form, came down as the Son of God, gave his life for the, as a ransom to pay the debt for all mankind's sin. And that is over-the-top good news. And when I look at that, that I am living because of him, I say that that is simply amazing. It is my testimony. Absolutely, and, and I understand that just prior to the recording, then you, you were diagnosed with sarcoidosis? Yes. Um, matter of fact, I didn't know what was wrong with me while we were cutting the previous record, Keep Living. Mm -hmm. But by the time I got to 2012, things had really started to, you know, you know fall apart. And um, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I was going to doctors. They couldn't tell me what was wrong with me. And my face had broke out into legions. And I went to a dermatologist to just to see what's going on and maybe they could help me with that area. And she looked at my face, saw a few of the legions, sent me to an uh, emergency room to have x-rays done on my chest to come back to find out that I was diagnosed with sarcoidosis. Yeah. Mahalia Jackson struggled with that throughout her life. That, I just heard that. Yeah. I just heard that Mahalia Jackson suffered with sarcoidosis and she died from it. Yeah. Well, how is, what is your prognosis? How are you feeling? I feel great. I, I, my strength is I've gained more weight, and uh, I've been put on a medicine called Mexotrexate. And there are other medicines out there for sarcoidosis uh, besides Mexotrexate. Prednisone is one of the many medicines that many sarcoidosis patients are, are taking. But I'm on, on um, Mexotrexate, and I feel great. Well, that's good to hear. Well, we thank God for you, Ricky Dillard. You have uh, in, in, enlightened and, and enriched the gospel music community with uh, New G and, and all of your writing and singing. I just want, finally, uh, one final question to complete this statement. Ricky Dillard is... Ricky Dillard is a true servant of God. I, I count my life um, to pay 
uh, for what Christ has done for me. I want to serve him because I know that it was so over the top that he laid his, his life down and gave me mine, and I am his forever. Well, you are a great servant. Thank you for spending time with the Black Gospel blog, Ricky Dillard. Good luck on the new album, Amazing, and all of the singles and all of the touring and all the promotion that will uh, take place and, and all of the, the uh, souls that will be uh, transformed through the music. Thank you, kind sir.